There we go. We've got. Go ahead. And these are some of my pick collectors, and what I wanted to show you. So just a few of them. So they all collect like real time to keep data. And if you can look in this window, can you see this window? Uh, do you see my screen? Yeah, we do. Go ahead. We see. And you can see these numbers here, which I highlighted. Uh -huh. So this number says that this speed, which I told you about, is seven seconds behind the real time. So this data is ten seconds delayed right now, because it, there's a bit of it's very large. This other field, which is the same data but only one level, it's 60 milliseconds, which is the time pro for me to go to New York or the data to here to New York. So this is not delayed because it's uh, a low frequency feed. This high frequency feed is delayed by 12 seconds because uh, I believe they have a bandwidth problem. I don't know, maybe they throttle it. So this is exactly what I wanted to say. They, I receive uh, delayed data because uh, I subscribe to all the signals level to data. So this is like 55 uh, forex instrument with 10 levels on each uh, side of the book. So when it's delayed by 8 seconds right now. Uh, but it's still good for me because I will use it for uh, historical backtest and I know that it's delayed by 8 seconds. So I can uh, make sure not to do... And right now you see that the delay dropped to 2 seconds because probably they... I don't know. So uh, this is one of the problems that I you can get. So... In, like I said, this, is, this kind of data which is level 2, you cannot download it. So the only way to get it is to actually record it here, from my broker at least. Uh, this level here, this data here, you can download it, which is level 1 data. Uh, and like I said, I have a lot of thing downloaders. So for example, these are all the thing downloaders. This is a downloader which downloads real-time news. So let me see if I can find a piece of news. So uh, you can see some Russian news, of course, because of uh, today. Let me pause it. So you can see here, bam, a news, NSD, USD, soft. And I have the time I received. I can use this in my algo if I want to watch real time news. Yeah. yeah. You can see this some news. For example, some right. Russian news. Everything is Python. You can see in the Python. Yeah. Download one, I use live Python. Everything is Python here. So this is also Python. Download, this downloads fixed data. So. And I also have the my new scrollers. So let me show them to you. Um, hello. This is the kind of data that I'm downloading from the internet. So you can see here the latest stuff I've downloaded, like some Bitcoin prices, which I for historical reasons I ping some servers to see the ping time. Maybe I want to uh, to use this data in the future and all kinds of financial data that I'm downloading. And let me show you how I store it. So this is my the the sources that I said that this is the biggest one, Wanda book. You can see the SQLI database. I can open it. This contains the metadata with uh, the actual stuff which is downloaded. So you can see the actual URL I downloaded, the time, some metadata. The files are stored in these zip files. I have like uh, 200 megabytes, gigabytes in this folder. And then the one zip file, which was downloaded in March, is here. And we can see here the downloaded files, the one picture which was downloaded from, from a website. It contains like forex information. Or another one, this is different kind of information from Wanda. And this is downloaded in real time. I mean, each day it runs and downloads data. And I download like a very like Scotia. This is a bank. I download the uh, PDFs with uh, analysis, like their market analysis. So I download a lot of data from the internet, and I'm not using it right now. Everything, but if I want to use it, Econoday, for example, this is real time news, so news event. So I can open it. I can see a news calendar from a certain day. So in this day, there was this kind of, this news event, it was on a Sunday, so not very much news. Uh, so, like I said, I don't know tons and tons of data. Uh, so this yeah, was what I wanted to show. Search engine and algorithm to dig your data. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you can see the SQLite uh, database, the big file, which is the file. Some 
has morph, morph, some has this. And the database is very simple, a single table with the URL I downloaded and information on where I store it in the database. So right now you can see that that feed is delayed by 15 seconds. So, and you can see that it's very high frequency, like 500 messages per second and toward, on two kilobytes each message. So this is like one megabyte per second. And it contains the level two data. So you can see here, it contains Euro, Yen price, 10 levels on one side, 10 levels on the other side. This one contains a single level. So one level on one side, one level on the other side. So. Hey, Gigi, I think you should get an award for this. So these are my thick downloaders. Yeshwan just sent me a wow. I say a wow too. So you, how many feats do you got going at once? You got one, four, six, ten? Um, I don't know how many screens do you see here. Uh, I actually have a two another one. So this one is for Bitcoin. Oh. And this one stores the stock tweets. If you know stock tweets? Yeah, I know stock like tweets. Like a place with the tweets about stocks. Yeah, the tweets uh, about, about stocks, Bitcoin. yeah. So I, I store the, their uh, real-time feed, so you can see one of their documents, so I can see all the tweets that they sent at a certain time, so you can see here one of their tweets, for example. And I store this data maybe in the future I'll be doing some sentiment analysis, from, I don't know. And if you look at one day, they send like 500, 5,000 uh, per, tweets per day, or something like that. And uh, this is my storage with uh, real-time data, this folder. You can see that it has 600 megabytes, but it will grow very, very fast. Like the delayed feed I showed you here, it produces like uh, one gigabyte per day. So, 80, 80, uh, sorry, 30 gigabytes in just uh, like the last uh, one month and a half. So you can see uh, 52 gigabytes per day, so like a single file. Uh, this is with fixed information. So, so it's very, very high frequent large data. You can see I, I actually store the fixed information that I receive. So this is a fixed message. And we can decode it, for example, in the browser. I have a fixed decoder here. I can put a fixed message in. And you can see this is a market data message on USD Canadian. So 20 levels uh, in total, 10 on each side. And you can see the different levels in the market. At this price, $600,000. At this price, $4 million. And uh, this is the exact time, time when the, uh, this tick was valid. And this file is full of this kind of uh, level two ticks. So I store the actual uh, fixed level, fixed uh, messages, uh, which is not very efficient, but it was the quickest way to do it. So I didn't want to lose data. I will need to optimize this to store less data. And this is the compressor that I said I said you about uh, LMZA. So if you can look at one of these big files, it has uh, 50 gigabytes of uh, data. So 50 gigabytes, 45 gigabytes but it's stored in a single 900 megabytes file. So like 50 to one compression. So it's really, really compressed. Uh, so you can imagine one uh, 50 megabytes per day for 40 days would be much, much larger than what I use here. So I need to compress it. And this compression is very, very slow. So to compress one, a single file of this, uh, 50 megabyte, uh, gigabyte files in a one gigabyte file, it takes like one and a half hour to compress it. So I need to run this each night to avoid uh, getting high. So I'll start it right now. So this uh, script gets the the last day uh, files and compresses them so that uh, I don't waste any space. So this is a small file with Bitcoin data, which will compress very fast. But then it will get to the really big ones, which will take one hour to compress. So. Well, Je Jeff had a question for you. How much uh, bandwidth are you, uh, I'll say per day, are you downloading? So I can show you right now, I'm uh, using uh, 
Right now it's in the middle of the night and it's slower, but on average it's 10 megabytes per megabits per second. So that's your connection speed? Yeah. Sorry? That's your connection speed, 10 megabits per second. No, no, no. My connection is 30 megabits, which is very slow in Romania. In Romania, it's normal to have like 250, but for some reasons, I don't have it. Yeah. Uh, I have a 30 megabit connection, and all the feeds I use during the day when the market is uh, active is like 10 megabits per second. You can see that right now we are at 6 megabits per second. Mm -hmm. So, but during the day, it's like 10 megabits per second. Yeah. Uh, so my CPU is a little bit loaded right now because it's of the compressing, compressing. but normally it's like 20% on me. Because uh, there's another question that came up about storage solutions. Now this is your backend storage. My storage solution is my computer drives, but uh, I have uh, Windows introduced recently a new file system. So pretty much everybody knows about NTFS, NTFS right? Yeah. Everybody knows about it. Uh, Windows introduced a new one, which is called uh, Refus, and I'm using this one uh, because it's, uh, it's some sort of a virtualized. Uh, let me step to storage to show you. So it's a virtualized uh, memory kind of file system, which uses two physical drives in my case, and you can uh, create virtual uh, drives on it, which can grow independently, so they can grow, they can shrink. The space is not uh, allocated all in advance. It's allocated as a need on a, a need to, to use basic. So, and it's also very resilient. It's like a RAID. It's also checksum, so it's very hard to, it's not, it's impossible to corrupt the data without uh, knowing it. So this is the new storage technology from Microsoft, uh, which I'm using. So, and what's the RAM on that puppy of a machine that you got? 32 gigabytes, you can see it here. 32, I don't know, it's a lot of numbers, but if you add these two together, it's 32. So, yeah, oh, you can see it, 32 gigabytes. Uh, GG. The, uh, bandwidth, I, I didn't measure exactly at my, I used straight forest, so forest doesn't have an like a second when the market opens. For it's open like, like slowly in the course of like half an hour, it starts to ramp up. It doesn't have a fixed second when it starts. So I don't have uh, like a really, really high. Uh, and I'm also using uh, retail feeds. So retail feeds, uh, even during news, don't actually stream every everything. So I don't have uh, big spikes in uh, bandwidth. So it pretty much stays constant around 10 megabits per second. It does spike up a little bit in the news, but what's more likely to happen is for the broker to throttle the data to send me less data during that time. That's quite impressive. And well, I guess coming down to with what you have right now, um, I guess charting, I don't know if you're going to be part of that webinar next month. So if I already sharing it, I'm, I can show you my what I said about the scrolling to 18 million points in real time. Yeah. Um, let this start. So this is a Python program which uses VPF. So everything is Python except a little bit of your code. Uh, it starts pretty slow because uh, I don't, the Python version of .NET is not very fast. So now it will load the data. Let's take a little bit until everything starts. I can make it big. We can go. So you can see it start. It loaded 10 million points. So yes, this is based on uh, a minute, one minute bars. I also have a version working with the tick data, but it's not uh, working right now because, like I said, I didn't work with it anymore. So if I can make this a little bit smaller, so you can see I'm not sure the speed of uh, what you can see, but on my end, when I scroll, this is moves in real time without any kind of lag. So I, you will probably see some lag because it's a large email that needs to be sent to the internet to see this. But uh, on my end, this moves in real time. And I can scroll to 10 million points in real time. And I tested it with 100 million points and it was the same speed, so. That's pretty pretty amazing. Anybody got- can go to a lower uh, Jeff asked- I have this all, all mine. Go ahead, go ahead, GG. Uh, now I don't have a YouTube channel. Yeah. Uh, this was my tick provider. I mean, all the data that I have, different instruments like for 
let's see the stock market for example. I didn't update this uh, information in a long time, so it will be let's see how bad far, how far back this is uh, until until a few months ago. So this would be the S and P stock market. <laughs> Yeshwan says he, he feels he jumped into a shark tank. <laughs> so, so you, this is what I wrote uh, like a few years back. This is why the colors are not made clear. That's that's um, your that's your um, WPF uh, in .NET, right? Yes, and I have a different one which I made look like an IDE. So this is a, a, the next iteration which I use. Uh, which is it looks a little bit this one is integrated with R, so I can call R code in here. And you can see that it looks like uh, more like an ID like MATLAB. You can you have variables, so you can of course they are to bug. Uh, start again. Um, and I can I, I can load data data from Python, I can send it to R, I can do a plot in R, I can uh, get it back in uh, uh, in Python, but I don't remember to actually so I don't use this. Uh, but we, we, so right now I'm using Python here. One plus one. This is Python code. This is the syntax error. And what I and this is R code. One ten. Bam. This is the R code. Huh. So oh. I believe uh, you can see R. Uh, and I, if I create a variable in R, I can use it then in Python. I can send it to Python. But I forgot how they send it to that. Uh, so I have this. Uh, no, this is this bug that keeps crashing. Um, so yeah, this was another project that I used. But right now, my then I am starting to use uh, Mathematica. You can see, let's for example, let's also implied volatility data, and uh, we can plot it here, the CD. And let let me load, for example, the euro dollar. Let's run this again. Oh, similar to MuPad. So yes, it's similar, and this is like the euro dollar, some volatility data on the euro dollar. Nice. And I also had the like the different kind of stuff like interactive plot, which was I'm not sure how to use this anymore. Let's see if it works. No, it doesn't work anymore because I deleted the data file. Uh, oh, I know another one which works. So uh, I have the Gratch one. So this is like a Euro Dollar Gratch, uh, which is the volatility estimator. Uh, 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 notebook to compile it. So this is the gratch compilation from uh, from that code. So this, this uh, and this work talks with Python. So I can load my data from my pick story using this. So let me show you, for example, my pick story. We have it here, sorry, in picks. Let's see, for example, FXCM, Euro Dollar, this year. So like a few weeks back, and we can see uh, half a megabyte for a day worth of uh, tick data. This is downloaded tick data, so this is not real time tick data. And uh, this is compressed using the same compression algorithm. I stored at the end of it uh, a small XML file, which uh, contains some metadata for it. And this is what I store as metadata in the file: the chunk of data, the size. And some metadata about the file, the high, the low, the first six days, the last six days, how many ticks I have in this file. And from my libraries, I can load this data. For example, in uh, Iron Python, in uh, I Python notebook, which is the last one I'm using. So I do, uh, let me see which one works from this. Uh, I believe this one was compared against downloading. So this is a notebook which loads data from my uh, storage. So let me run it. So I'm saying here load one day, uh, let me load the 10 days, between uh, 4 and 10 uh, uh, September. And this command will actually load it, so I run it, it says that it, uh, it starts to load the tick file. Uh, it, it loaded 700,000 ticks from uh, during that week. And then I can do a few operations and I can display it. Uh, let's run this and then display it. This displays a very short uh, time period, which uh, was in, of interest to me, but let's expand this for a few days. And you can see here a few days of uh, uh, 
big data for zero dollar. So this, like I said, this uses my own uh, downloaded big data from those these files here, and with this command, which is one of my library, I can load it in a data in a data storage. I can show this, just this variable. So this is an array. I can display. You can see here the timestamp, the values of the of the ticks, how many points. Let's see how many ticks. We have seven hundred thousand ticks. Mm -hmm. And then you can use, I can use standard the Python processing uh, stuff to to like pandas. I'm using pandas here, numpy. So this is a pandas command to join to to sources of data. Let me see what else I have interesting here. Um, so this was the tick count which I showed you a few days ago. How many ticks I have in each uh, database, in each of my tick storages from here. So this is a the notebook which computes this this, uh, this stuff. Let me see if I have something else interesting. The swap information, for example. So if, if you know that uh, when you do a forex trade, you need to pay like uh, an interest overnight if you store the position overnight. So this uh, notebook here allows me to to see how the interest uh, evolved over a period of interest. Mm -hmm. So how many, how would, how much would I have paid or received for holding a certain position in the market? So this is like this uh, regular spikes are the uh, Wednesday where you pay three amount, three times the the interest on the normal. This is the forex thing. So if anybody has any questions or yeah, uh, well there there was a bunch there was a bunch from Jeff. Uh, let's roll back. Um, he wanted to know first how long like has all the system been in development? Well, from 2010 until today, like some pieces, I'm, I'm trading like for four years now, and I developed what I needed for my trading. Okay. Then he asked, uh, where do, where do you store your code? Like Git, SVN. I used to use uh, SVN. I also have uh, Git on my computer. But uh, I'm not uh, right now. I'm not storing it anywhere. I've discovered that it takes. I'm, I'm very. Good, I have very good backup. So I have like uh, the file system I showed you before, which is Ride. I also have an online backup solution, Crash Plan. I also manually backup data to a different hard drive, which I store in a different location. So I'm not afraid of losing my data. Uh, uh, I discovered that uh, using uh, version control kind of slows me down, and I stopped using it. Yeah. Then Yeshwant asked, um, "What compression system uh, were you using? What's what's it called?" Ed? So it's called the L L L Z M A. Oh, the L Seven Z. Yeah. So Seven Z using using you can see here Seven Z using using it is one of the best uh, free one uh, available, but it's very 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 slow. But it's much better than Zip, for example. Anybody else got any questions? There's a lot of comments here from Je or a few from Jeff. Uh, right, right here you can see a script that I use to, um, how to say, to um, to check. I, I use a lot of, of Python packages, like third-party Python packages, everything here. And I have a script to check if a new version appears. So you can see a new version of Pandas appears, which I may or may not download if I feel the need for it. But do you do you worry about backward compatibility? Where let's see if you have a four-year-old script. Uh, yes, it's very. This is why I actually like to update uh, packages from time to time, so that I don't fall fall too back behind. Because if you want to update the library like with the new one four years uh, in the future, you're gonna have problems. So, but if you update every three months, it, you are you are only going to encounter minor incompatibilities, which are easy to fix on the spot. To wait four years and then update to everything. Are, are you using uh, are the two point seven stream or the three point three stream for the version 2. of Python? Two point seven. I'm using. And okay. I didn't have any big. I did have some compatibilities uh, problems, but first they were not on critical components. They were on on uh, side components, which are, they were not critical for my trading. Uh, and I fixed them. And uh, so I didn't have anything uh, very big uh, which impacted my uh, actual trading. Uh, and I can, I mean, I can download, I can see that there's an incompatibility, I can wait a little bit until I solve the problem. I don't have to fix it right now. 
Well, Jeff came back with another question about which uh, Python profile if you're using any. Python profiler? Uh, uh, I use the well, one built in, so I can I can show you some profiling which I've done sometimes a long time ago. I had some problems with uh, a, a computation that I used, and uh, this is a profile a profile I I did a, I run the profile to see which function uh, spent all the time, and you can see here that where the time was spent. Uh, this is an HTML report of the profiler. It's not as uh, nice as uh, Visual Studio profiler, but it gets the job done. Uh, so I, I spent a lot of time, for example, in the find vertical pixels function. So uh, this was for, uh, I showed you before, uh, the, um, the one that they saw with pictures. So this level that I wrote a script which actually looks at each pixel in this image and extracts its color and converts it to a number so that I can work numerically with the data in the picture. So basically I'm extracting the data from the picture and I'm also doing OCR. So I'm recognizing the text here and I'm extracting that this is August 8th and the numbers on this side so that I can uh, know uh, which levels are displayed in the picture. So this profile was for this code, which was very, very slow. And I wanted to see how can I optimize it. But the profile is not very good, but it's, it's good enough to use when you have an emergency like this. Of course, the real solution would be to move the code to C++, but that would take a lot of time. So it's easier for me to just optimize it a little bit until it's fast enough. So this is like the C, let me show you the C code and C sharp code that I have. So for example, this is uh, which I, the, uh, this code which draws this uh, picture here, yeah. it's actually this uh, code here. Uh, not, let me see this drawer. So this is the C sharp code which is invoked to display that uh, that stuff. And I also have some C++ code for uh, some computations. For example, uh, if I want to to compute candles starting from tick data. I want to aggregate tick data into candles. I have this C++ code which can uh, build one minute candles, for example, from the tick data. So I'm not using candles anymore, but uh, this it, I use this uh, in the past. And for example, if I want to do that, that very good compression, I have these uh, functions which can compress, uh, they can call the library to compress the data. And I also have here the code which embed the R into that uh, software I showed you, so which can call the R function from from uh, my code. So uh, wow. Anybody? Any other questions? Yeah. Any questions for Gigi? This is amazing. Oh, well, here you go. Uh, if you, get, if you want to read it, uh, it's from Mike. Well, I don't need to see it since I'm in it, at least at the moment. But uh, yes, I, I did think thought about this. It, it is a little bit weird to be able to participate but not see it. Uh, what is my motivation? Um, Make money. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> no, the to participate here is to because I can learn interesting. I can uh, meet interesting people, and I can also uh, uh, see what other guys are doing, so I can get ideas. Because of, uh, some of my very my very good ideas are from uh, the community. So, for example, I watch I watch the Axiv uh, quantitative finance uh, paper paper stream. So. This is like a place on it for research papers. And you can see here in the last week what kind of financial papers they, uh, they published. And you can see that I looked at this one, Cascades in Real in Interbank Market. Let's see what this PDF is about. And uh, I can get some uh, interesting, uh, some ideas. Sometimes I get good ideas from watching these papers. So it's, it's, a good, a good, uh, keep, it's a good idea to keep track of uh, what other people are doing can get sometimes valuable information this way. I mean, how would you... Hi, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I just want to thank you for all the information that you provided. It's just completely, completely amazing. 
uh, it's completely went over my head to be honest <laughs> with you but it, it was it was very interesting to see it uh, the one person that i want to ask you is for somebody like a who's starting out what kind of skill sets do you think um, the industry requires for a data scientist well the first skill is not a skill you need to have a passion for this and you need to actually be interesting in doing this so um I believe that the best way to learn is to practice. So, in your case, I would think what kind of problem I would like to analyze. For example, maybe I would like to analyze the income uh, distributions in my country, or maybe I want to analyze how much uh, it takes for a taxi ride from uh, New York to from some place in New York to another place. Because recently there was a very big data set made available with New York taxi fees. Or maybe you want to analyze uh, how much. people who wait at the, the restaurant before getting a reservation when they are getting a reservation another data set was made available recently with restaurant reservation data so think about the problem that you would be interested in it, or maybe finance i don't know you just uh, try to, to look uh, for a problem in that area we using big data and start to analyze download data from that area of interest start to learn how to analyze it so practice doing this What, yeah. what kind of tools uh, you think someone should use uh, to analyze data like this? Well, the, the, I'm I'm not a data scientist, but from what people uh, I know are using, they are using Excel, they are using R, they are using Python, they are using Tableau. So, which you, whatever you prefer, if you are more of a programmer, you are you are going to use using R or Python. If you are not so much of a programmer, you are going to use Excel or Tableau. So it depends on your uh, preferences. Jeff asked the question, how many hours do you work daily on this? Do you work at night? Well, this is my job since uh, I don't do any, any other things. So this is my job practically. Uh, how many hours a week do you do? Varies. So some days more, some days less. Depends. Well, it, you can obviously see the passion in this system. This is amazing. And I started here a downloader, which uh, downloads offline data from Elmas, historical data. But like I said, this is only a single level. So it says right there, depth one. It has a single level. You can't have level two data from Elmas. So this is not uh, public or not without a lot of money. So I'm sure they have the data, but I don't believe that they sell it to anybody. Any other questions for Gigi? This is rare to have. I guess, thank you very much, Gigi. You got another question uh, from, I believe it's Mike. Yeah, I'm sorry for that. <laughs> for extending, that's okay, man. I'm 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 all for it. We've had webinars up to five hours, so I'm used to it. Um, yeah, I have a question. I have a question about execution. Now, okay, Python and everything for analysis and management, but um, in in case of uh, uh, execution, you write um, another algos. Uh, yeah, I mean, in C sharp or to, to No, no, I work with Python. You can work with Python until the uh, frequency is of like, uh, let's say, 10 milliseconds. So if you need to trade faster yeah, than 10 milliseconds. Brokers, I mean, brokers API. So for example, right now I'm using Fix. I'm not sure if you are familiar, but Fix is a text based XP okay. API. You can use it from oh, yeah, whatever. Yeah, uh -huh. So I'm using Fix. I can open a socket and you can see here I wrote my own Fix connector. So okay. this is a code which serializes, builds a fixed message. This is a code which deserializes it. Oh, these, are the, uh, these are the um, XML files from the broker, which tells you, for example, Elmax here, what uh, how their messages are structured. I read this XML file. I build the serializer from it. Um, and uh, some brokers uh, trade through, for example, through REST, through JSON messages like Wanda. Others use the different, uh, like XML-based uh, messages. With uh, LMAX, you can also trade using uh, JSON, for example, if you don't want to use fix. So uh, there are uh, there are ways to connect to the broker without uh, using. And I, of course, if I actually need, I could wrote a, uh, wrote a little code in Java, connect to a broker. And then forward it, forward the code from there to Python, for example. I don't actually need to do anything. Else. Everything in a single language, for example. Uh, 
there's two more questions that came in. We're gonna, I'm going to address Mike's concern here in a minute. Um, Gigi, he asked, do you use LOD linked on data? I never heard of that. I don't know what that is. So I never heard of it. And Gigi, for the non-programmer, what is the other program people used other than Excel? One, one yeah, which I know, maybe, but I don't know what it is. I'm sure there are others, but I don't know about it. Becca, I believe, is another one, but I think this is for machine learning. So, so, so Gigi, here's a question for you from Mike. This is the one he's been... Um, Brian probably won't have the in incentive to keep it private for members only, so he's basically using your content for profit. What's your view of it? My view is that this is for me to, to be concerned. Oh. So I appreciate Mike, but uh, uh, don't take this the wrong way, but I don't need an advocate. So yeah, don't from, take this wrong way, please. Mike, 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 you also have to understand you're being kind I of... take care of myself. So. Yeah, exactly. From my point of view, I, I mean, I don't know what your beef is, but I've got over 800 videos on YouTube and, you know, this is my living, this is uh, uh, Gigi's living. Uh, I don't know what you're trying to point out, but uh, it's, I don't know. If you want to respond, go ahead. Anybody else got any questions at all? Thanks, though, Gigi. Like I said, I mean, this is very helpful. We'll, we'll talk uh, afterwards on this. Um, anybody else? Is, is there anybody else got any questions about technology, uh, databases, trading, anything? Yeah, I can show you. This is what I'm yeah, using to ahead. monitor the forex markets, which I trade. So this is the candle-based uh, software. Uh, I use it to monitor a few markets. This is what I need more monitors. I have another one which I use to monitor the markets on a different screen. Uh, so this is for my real trade. I also have my real trading platform. Uh, I also have uh, one that news real-time news. So this is the news I was capturing before. Let me search for you for Rabo, for example. I don't work right now. See, so, I just, go ahead. So I can show different kind of software. Oh, um, this is my text editor. It's a simple text editor. So. Tony asked a question if you're making any trading off of uh, what you're doing right now. Like I said, this is my what I live from, so this is my job, trading. So yes, I, I do make money and I, I live from this. I guess my question is, you're, you're not driving Ferraris yet. <laughs> <I don't laughs> you're know. working towards it. Because if I, were, if I were to buy a Ferrari, what would I trade with? Then Why would you be here? That's the question. <laughs> Yes, but uh, I presumably I would also want to buy another Ferrari. So you get one for uh -oh. yeah. it's a, a few years in the future. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, did you get, have you heard about this uh, quanti? Oh, yeah, that's how it's called. It's all written in Python, where you can launch your algorithm. Topian, uh, I believe. Yeah, Quantopian, yeah, sort of. Uh, yeah, the problem is that one is pretty much for the uh, stock market, it's not it's very bad for forex. And mm -hmm. two, it's uh, like minute level data, they don't have uh, big data, and they don't allow you to download the data. So it's good for beginners, or if you don't want to spend money writing your own code. For forex, I wouldn't use it because they have very bad forex data. But if you want to trade the stock market, I believe uh, it's good if you want to start from somewhere. But I might be Anybody? It's more, I, I'm not saying using, I mean, this is a place where you can exhibit your achievements. Where you can uh, like I said, it's more for a stock market, and I don't like, I believe that the stock markets are very dangerous, yeah? so I don't like to trade the stock market. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Uh, if I were to trade, I would only trade the, like the index. But trading individual stocks, except the like the largest ones, is very very dangerous. So. In one way, yes. In one way, no. So, I mean, 
You can have a surprise news which goes 20% against you. So I've seen this numerous times. Even my company that I work for. <laughs> so it's really like a news happens and bam, you're 10% down without leverage. If you are using leverage, you are dead. So I, the index is more behaved, so you can trade it more calmly. Yeah, yeah. Or if you if you avoid the like news, if Apple has the news, you get out of the position. But you can have unexpected news. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, 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 I want to just express my regrets. Where I started with stocks and was losing, moved to forex and lost, and now gaining back. But then I lost the opportunity in the quantitative easing, like set and forget. In yes, but the, the, the question is, would you have bought and hold, or did you, would you have tried to day trade it? So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, because sure. my opinion is that you would have exited the position after the little bit of increase. So. <laughs> Obviously. So, I must, you, you know, I'm having the exact same show, so you are not the only one. So I'm also looking at this chart and uh, asking myself, uh, what the hell am I doing? I mean, what? why don't I buy and just hold for a year, right? So this stock market is like a like a vertical line. Like this is incredible, right? Just goes up. And instead of wasting my time, just as I would have bought two years ago here, and with a little bit of leverage, and now I would have felt three Ferraris, right? Uh, <laughs> but the problem is that if I would have bought here, I would have sold here, and maybe bought a little bit here and sold here, and where would I be? Would I have made money? I don't know. I mean, you know, in this actually, in this particular example, I would. It's so easy to hold. This is straightforward, you know. So basically, you can apply the same thing now. So buy now at 2000 here and hold for a year. Will it be up? Will it be down? I, I said the exact same thing in 2012. I said the exact same thing here in 2009 and 2011. After this was the uh, US debt uh, crisis with the downgrade. This was a downgrade. I said the same thing in 2009 at this peak, I mean, at uh, this peak here. So I said, oh, I always said, this is too late. Everything is already happened. And it keeps on going up, right? So I don't know. Credit. Maybe this will actually be the final talk. But uh, this is like, like I said, it's to the food, right? In, in, anybody else at all? Mike? Hope you're a happy camper now. Anybody? Jeff came back. Good intro, LOD for data mining. I will give it a look. Yeah, I'll, I'll take but a look. At least to know what that is. Yeah, yeah. There's always something new out there. Technology. Uh, anybody else got any questions? Comments, criticisms, we're all open here. Anybody? Database? Anybody want to give a kudos to, uh, to Gigi on that? That was awesome. I mean, that was super awesome. Yeah, thanks a lot. Maybe you want to type something up for him? Show me your appreciation like an equivalent of a, an applause? Yeah, standing ovation, please. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to start. Thanks. There you go. GG, respect. Ivan, yeah, GG, that was fantastic. Gobsmacked from Jeff. Thank you. Great stuff. And the quiet one's still quiet. Anybody else? Wow, that was amazing. Anybody else got any questions? This is uh, two hours now. So since you mentioned at the beginning Bitcoin and Litecoin, I'm also watching those. I traded that <laughs> beginning of the year. So this is on another screen. I keep an eye on it, even if I don't risk it. If, if I told you the numbers, I got a guy who made it just a loan on a tr Bitcoin trade in the last two years. He more than doubled his money. He could, he bought it. He well, could he could have bought himself I, a Ferrari. I put my mind on it, so. <laughs> so. Yeah, I'm I'm amazed. I mean, the same guy is doing quite well. I'm just amazing numbers. Yeah, so basically, I bought here at 200 just before the spike. Oh! And I sold uh, not 
had the spike I sold somewhere around here, like after the big crash here, and I sold around here at 800. So I bought at 260, say that 800, about three times gain. So. Uh. And I knew that from this point, I knew that it was going to go down, so I exited. So there are also some problems with my exchange that I was using, so I, I exited completely the market. Yeah, Jeff says he, he tripled his money. Bitcoin should go up soon. I'll give you a little hint. Maybe I'm, I'm not the sure it's, uh, it's not complicated today, but it will go up. But it's getting the time frame right, it's complicated. I'll tell you a it's little. very hard to trade it. A, a little birdie told me about uh, the ruble, short it. Just leave yeah, it at that. I don't know about your little. Uh, Birdie, but your little birdie will have a really big problem tomorrow. Yeah. Because uh, uh, Russia just uh, increased the interest rate from 10% to 17%. Wow. So this was today, it closed at 65. And you can see the market is not open right now, but the price is already to 60. So, like, pretty much. And I believe that wow. tomorrow will go to like at least 50, at least for a little bit of time. Yeah. It's quite down. I have to check in with and the birdie. See, I'm not sure if you are familiar with Drudge Report. But yep. when Drudge Report has this like a headline uh, news, uh, you know it's bad. So, <laughs> so it's going to be a very interesting day tomorrow on the rubble. I'm very curious what will happen. I stayed away from it. I don't trade the like dangerous stuff like this. This is for, well, for the real big the, the bird, The birdie's doing quite well. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> after tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, right. we'll, we'll check in, man. Anybody else got any questions or anything? Sorry, Gigi. Go ahead. Uh, I just want to say, if you close today, uh, congratulations. But if you uh, hold the position, I will ask you tomorrow. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. We'll reach out. Anybody else got any questions or anything? Uh, I, my jaw is still about 20 feet behind me, Gigi. That was awesome. I didn't expect that, but that was superior awesome. Anybody else? No? I think we got a round of kudos and thanks from everybody. Gigi, you want to say anything at all? <laughs>